Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing really, really well. Got a great question the other day, which is the inspiration for this video, but it was from somebody that wasn't really technical, but was looking to be able to communicate better and be more confident with the developers and programmers he was working with. You'll find that as a developer, you'll always appreciate other people trying to understand what you're doing a little bit better, all right? And that kind of goes both ways. If someone else wants to take the time to understand how your code works and how the tech is working, you also need to take the time to understand what their job is like. What's the designer's job like? What's the business development person's job like? All right, so it's a two-way street and always really appreciate it when someone wants to understand what you're doing. So we're gonna go through some basic buzzwords, talk about them a little briefly and actually dive into them a little bit more behind just surface level definitions. I'm catering some of this video to a, more of a wider audience. I'm not gonna make it too technical for just programmers or developers or whatever, but this really is for everyone that just wants to understand this stuff a little better. And that just means everyone. I think everyone has a basic mental picture of how web architecture works and let's just keep that picture, all right? So I think the basic picture is like, you have a front-end application, it hits a back-end application. That application hits a database, does some special business business logic and returns a response to the front-end, all right? So that's the basic mental picture. It's still very accurate, but we have to do a little better than that, right? So the whole purpose of this video is to take that little mental model and break it down a little bit more all right so there's four four parts of this video the four parts are going to be we're going to talk back end first then front end then we're going to tie them together with some basic use cases and then we're going to go a little bit beyond the basics all right four parts so let's just put a really simple definition to back end back end is any application that's connected to the internet or the cloud whose primary purpose is to service requests just say it one more time, just to be really clear, but it's any application on the internet whose main job, only job, is to service request. All right, that's the general gist of backend. Now with that said, it's better to learn by example, and let's just take a few examples of the most common backend processes. All right, and we're gonna just cover web servers and databases and get into some more advanced stuff later. But for this section, the two most common backend processes are web servers and databases. A web server is really easy to understand, but also really easy to overcomplicate. All right, so what exactly is a web server? But a web server process is anything that can respond to an HTTP request and return a file to it. That's all it is. If you're doing something really basic, like a really basic static page that doesn't change and just presents something, you could actually do that with just one web server, right? A web server could do something as simple as just return a file from your computer. That's the most simplistic use of a web server, right? Just, it could serve up random files. So you could hit www.myhomepage.com, it hits a server somewhere, all the web server does is locate a static HTML file and just return it right away. And then you could, that's technically a website. Okay, so the second most popular backend process that's running is gonna be database. All right, we just talked about the most popular backend process. Obviously, that's a web server. You guys know what a web server is now. The second most popular one is a database. So every single semi-intelligent web server is gonna leverage a database to persist something, all right? But with that said, it's also important to know that is you don't have to use a database just for web technologies, right? If you have a scientist and he's running all these experiments, he might be gathering tons of gigabytes of data from his experiments and they're all offline. He could just save them into a database and that could be a perfectly good use case for a database. So you don't have to use a database with a web server, but if you're doing anything intelligent with a web server, you probably need a database, all right? When a web server leverages a database, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, unless you're doing a dummy website, but for those 99% of the cases, the web server always sits on one computer and the database sits on a different computer and they have their own connection. The reason why a database is almost always 
on a separate computer is that both web servers and databases are things that really try to perform to the highest ability and they use a lot of resources. So if you run a database server on your computer, that database is gonna use a ton of memory to try to perform as, as best as possible, all right? And if you run a web server and a database side by side on the same computer, usually they compete for computer resources. So that's why usually people separate them. Unless your computer is insanely powerful, you're gonna have your web server here and your database over here. That's enough for backend. For now, let's talk about frontend a little bit and then we're gonna tie the two together. All right, section two, we're gonna talk about frontend really quickly, but usually this is a little easier to kind of understand or conceptualize than backend, but frontend or client-side code is any code that runs on a client, all right? And clients include the Chrome browser you're using to watch this video or your mobile phone. Remember the basic premise of the internet, right? The basic premise of the internet is a client-server relationship. There's clients making requests to servers. Just like you go to a steakhouse, you're the client and the restaurant is the server and you order your steak, the restaurant's gonna respond with a steak, right? It's the same analogy for the internet. So we just talked about backend stuff, which is like the restaurant, and essentially all front-end is, is the client. One important thing to remember as a non-technical person is that when you request a change from a developer, a change isn't always siloed to just front-end or just back-end. They always come together. Unless you're asking something really simple, like I wanna change that button to red. But if it's not that simplistic, just assume that everything you want to change is intertwined between front end and back end. All right, it's all intertwined in the concept of web applications. They're not just back end tasks or just front end tasks. They almost always come together. All right, section three, I think this section is probably gonna be the most fun and most useful section. If you have a basic idea of what back end and front end means, at least intuitively, client server, we can move on to section three, which is gonna be tying all this stuff together. So remember our basic model, and we're always gonna keep the basic model in our head. All right, so the basic model is a front-end application is something you interact with, right? You're the one pressing buttons on the front-end application. Those applications make requests to back-end processes, all right? The two most common back-end processes being web servers and databases. The web server, is gonna either read or write something from the database. It's gonna do some business logic that's custom to your application and it's gonna return something to the client, all right? So that's the mental model and let's dive into exactly what is the backend returning to the client. The older way of doing things was that the backend would render all the HTML in its entirety and return it back to the front end and the front end would just take that HTML and display it all. So that's kind of the old style. All the HTML is rendered on the back end and it's returned in the response. All the browser has to do is display it. The newer style, the newer style of architecture that many of the fancy web applications are using these days is that the back end, the back end doesn't return HTML anymore. All it returns is data, JavaScript data. And the front end, the front end is actually what's responsible of generating all those HTML tags. So the way I just presented this kind of sounds like a little black and white or old versus new, but it's not really black or white, all right? So sometimes the back end could respond with maybe half the page, like 50% of the page in HTML, and then the front end renders the rest. So it's not all or nothing, but everything falls within this kind of spectrum, all right? It's a mix and match of who is responsible of generating the final HTML that you see. It could be 100% the backend, it could be 50% the backend, or it could be 0%, all right? Everything falls on this spectrum. So what we just talked about is kind of difference of responsibilities, right? Backend responsibilities versus frontend responsibilities and how they could be shared and mixed and matched, but as a non-technical person, you shouldn't think of all the tech you're working with as like this magical black box. Like you shouldn't think of it as just, oh, I press buttons here and the right thing works, right? If you think of it as a black box, you have like 
no understanding of what it takes to get a feature working. I think the best thing you can do as a non-technical person, like the number one thing you can do to empower you to communicate better with developers is really understand what the responsibilities are for different parts of the technical system, right? And we just talked about the most basic set of responsibilities. If you have a basic understanding of what the back end is doing, what the front end is doing, how much data is actually being passed between the two, how much responsibilities is mixed between the two. If you have a basic understanding of that system, even between just those two levels, it's gonna make you that much more knowledgeable than just saying, oh, it's a black box where things work. So for section four, I just wanted to make this video pretty interesting and go beyond the basics a little bit. All right, so we talked about web server and a database, and those are just two. Those are just two of many different types of backend processes that are running, all right? So think of the backend as a huge system, all right? It's a system of computers that are communicating and connected to each other, and it's much more than just one web server and one database. Think about if you just go to amazon.com and you press buy on something, right? Do you think when you press buy on Amazon, it just hits a web server and a database? Do you really think that's all that happens? But no, there's probably a ton of stuff that happens, right? When you click buy on Amazon, I bet it hits like 50 computers to process your request. It hits payment. Maybe it hits an inventory system. Maybe it hits a security system. Maybe it hits a notification system to tell the vendor to start preparing your you know, box of socks that you just bought. But you just hit one button on Amazon and I bet 50 processes are activated. Let's talk about two really common processes and we're gonna talk about background processes and caching. Backend processing is pretty simple. It's when you need more time to process a request, all right? So usually when you interact with a web page, it's really fast, click, 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 and it's usually responsive, but sometimes it can't be so fast, right? And you don't want the user to wait for you. So one example I have here is like, what if you submit your homework to an automatic homework grader website, but the grading of the homework takes two days, right? You're not gonna sit at your computer and wait two days for the system to grade your homework. You're gonna submit your homework. It's gonna be queued up in the line and a background process is gonna render it. And then two days later, you'll get notified and you can see what you got on the homework, right? So background processes are to handle things that just take physically longer amounts of time, number crunching, processing huge amounts of data, but not everything can happen really fast. All right, the second other backend process that's also really, really popular is caching, right? So in the most basic use case, you get a request from the web server and it hits the database and it responds, right? But hitting the database, sometimes that can be a very expensive task. And what if you're hitting it with the same request 100 times. Well, you might wanna cache that response so you can respond much faster to the clients. Remember the basic idea of the cache, right? It's faster and easier access for things that happen very often. So your sofa with your favorite jacket on top of it is a cache for your closet, or your bookshelf in your apartment is a cache for the library, right? It's faster, easier access to things that you use very often. Managing caches is probably one of the most challenging parts of software engineering, but it's also a pervasive part. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. We covered a decent amount of stuff, and I admit a lot of the stuff we covered today in this video is just really, really basic, but it's catered towards a non-technical audience. All right, so don't kill me for trying to explain a really simple point, but remember we talked about four major things. We just talked about backend, what that kind of means, that buzzword of backend. We talked about front end, what that kind of means. Remember, front end is client side code, code on your phone. Third, we tied the two together. And remember why tying those two together is really important because you can separate the responsibility levels between backend and front end. And if you're aware of the differences of responsibilities between parts of the technical system, it's gonna really, really empower you as a non-technical person because you won't think of everything as magical black box. And finally, we just touched upon two other popular
backend process technologies, which is background processing and caching. Those are really popular, and those are also pervasive parts of any web application stack. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful. Not very technical, but just another overview video of basic web architecture. All right, so hopefully it was helpful. Leave me a comment, like the video, please subscribe. And thanks again for watching. I will see everyone next week. All right, take care.